The title of this message is Be Diligent. This is from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 1 through 8. Cast your bread on the surface of the waters, for you will find it after many days. Divide your portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. If the clouds are full, they pour out rain upon the earth. And whether a tree falls toward the south or toward the north, wherever the tree falls, there it lies. He who watches the wind will not sow, and he who looks at the clouds will not reap. Just as you not, do not know the path of the wind, or oh, how bones are formed in the womb of the pregnant woman, so you do not know the activity of God who makes all things. Sow your seed in the morning, and do not be idle in the evening, for you do not know whether morning or evening sowing will succeed, or whether both of them alike will be good. The light is pleasant, and it is good for the eye to see the sun. Indeed, if a man should live many years, let him rejoice in, the, in them all, and let him remember the days of darkness. For they will be many. Everything that is to come will be futility. Life has its challenges. We know that life has its peaks as well as its valleys. The overall fact we see in life or that we need to see there are both risks and opportunities when it comes to living a godly life. And since there are risks and are opportunities, we as believers need to be prepared, be ready for them. Casting our bread upon the waters means that life has opportunities and we must we must take hold of them when they come. We must not play it safe, standing back, watching life pass us by. If we want to stay back, expecting everything to fall into our laps, we will be severely disappointed when nothing comes our way. There are uncertainties in life. There are no guarantees. We do not have the faintest idea what will happen tomorrow or next week, even next year. Yet it does not mean that we stay idle, fiddling our way, fiddling our time away and doing nothing at all waiting for the perfect conditions that we believe will suit us just means we are lazy, inactive, and unproductive. We tell ourselves that now is not the right time. I'll plan on doing it later. This is even more important when it deals with our spiritual life. Waiting for the right time and place for Bible study means we will never even open the Bible and its dust will continue to accumulate while it sits on the bookshelf. Waiting for the right ministry opportunity means we will never serve and the God-given talents we, he gave us just goes to waste. Waiting for the right opportunity to witness for Christ means you will never tell your friend or co-worker just how much Jesus Christ has changed your life. You are then one of those secret believers who never shares their faith. Solomon tells us that we need a spirit of trust, a spirit of action and adventure. We need to face life's challenges and its opportunities with enthusiasm, with the faith that God gives to us. 
He encourages us to rejoice in life and yet realize and remember that eternity is far longer than a human being's lifespan. Moses writes in Psalm 90, verse 12, Teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. The wise and prudent individual will now think about the moment and what its impact will bring. He or she will take the long-range view toward eternity. In all of our decisions, we need to look at them from God's perspective, His point of view. We need to measure and consider their impact 10, 20 years from now and into eternity. Believers have to live with the attitude that although our lives are but a breath, a mere vapor in the wind, which is quickly blown away. Our home, our real place is with God, living with Him forever. Being diligent means you, I, every believer in Jesus Christ, will be active and will take risk, stepping out in faith. Opportunities are there. Risks are there as well. Yet it is for us to grasp unto them when they come. This is no time to be lazy. Stand in the back, believer. Thousands upon thousands pack the churches on Sunday. A good portion of, of them just do it as a routine. The thing to do. Just sitting in the chair in church does not make you an active believer in Jesus Christ. The diligent believer will be active, will be productive with the gifts God has given them. This is the challenge we believers need to realize, need to meditate on, take to heart. Then be actively, wholeheartedly, and diligently grasping at the opportunities God gives to us. Being diligent means be active. Being diligent means being productive. Being diligent means being a active believer in God's service. It is not it does not mean standing in the back or letting the opportunities that God gives unto us pass us by. We know that we are frail and we fall easily. We turn away from doing the will of God. What we need to do, what we must do, is being that active believer he can use, being that active witness of his son so that he can use us for his will, his purpose. Father, we thank you, Lord, as you continually, Father, strive within our hearts to, be, to give us, to give unto us that heart of activity, to be a witness, to do your will, to follow your will. And when, Father, you give us that opportunities to be that witness to the world, that you use us in whatever fashion you see fit. Being diligent is that we be active, Lord. And we not falter in doing your will. And so, Father, we ask that you re-energize the believer to do your will, to follow your will, to be active in your will, to be diligent. We ask all this in Jesus' name. 
Amen.